for three, Magic Talk and online. We are uh, coming up 14 minutes away from seven. Lovely to have you along this morning. Now, US President Donald Trump uh, has been forced to defend himself after claims that he has enabled uh, white supremacists um, like the Christchurch gunman. That's what we'll call him, the Christchurch gunman. Uh, Trump aides uh, say um, such claims are absurd and are pushing back on these hard. Former Trump campaign advisor uh, Stephen Rogers, um, who's been on the program uh, before, joins us now. Um, Stephen, um, it's not like Donald Trump hasn't said things about Muslims in Muslim countries. I mean, you can sort of see why perhaps people might want to point the finger a bit. Well, let's keep in mind that it all started when the president of the United States had uh, suggested that uh, laws be passed in this country to prevent uh, Muslims from certain countries, countries that, by the way, were chosen by President Barack Obama when we were having problems with uh, terrorist acts, etc. But saying that, the president of the United States is not, is not encouraging white nationalism. He has nothing to do with white nationalism. And I could tell you that in this country, he is being heralded as one of the most effective presidents who have worked with our minority communities and people from all ethnicities. Unfortunately, you don't hear that. And really unfortunate, uh, the politicians from uh, whether they're Republican or Democrat, whatever, they're politicizing situations like this. And that in itself is sad. Mm. Um, your, view, your view, and you, you, know, you know the president, your view of him, I mean, you, you talk openly um, quite often, don't you, about the fact that he's surrounded by people of all sorts of different um, ethnic um, origin and that sort of thing. But of course, all presidents are. I mean, that's just the, that's just the nature of the, of the White House and the office. Well, you're absolutely right, but all presidents have not come under fire the way he has by the mainstream media and by establishment politicians. Here's a businessman that got elected to office, and he doesn't play politics with anyone. He doesn't play the game, if you will, that has been played for many, many years. And this is why the people, and we like to call it Main Street USA, uh, the regular guy and regular gal elected him to office. So uh, you're right. Uh, a lot of presidents have been surrounded by a lot of people from different backgrounds, but no president, at least in my lifetime, has come under the intense fire that he has from all political persuasions. Mm. But, I mean, if you go back and look at some of the things he has said, you can see why some of these people might feel empowered by Trump, you see, um, some of these nut jobs on the far, far right. Um, Trump said in November 2015, you know, that um, he, he was on morning TV, he said, um, we're going to watch and study the mosques. And four days later, he said he would implement a database to track Muslims in the United States. We're going to watch these people. Um, um, and we're going to watch their massive problem. And he also said that uh, Islam hates us. I mean, there were plenty of, there's plenty of evidence out there to suggest that things are being whipped up. Well, I, I would suggest to you that uh, a lot of what we see going on with regard to these individuals and groups uh, taking the actions the way they are, attacking people, has a lot to do with the consumption of violence that we see every day. Look, when I grew up as a kid, uh, there were TV programs that had some moral value to them. There, were, there was always a moral lesson. Today, young people, they play video games that are violent. They play, uh, they watch TV, hear radio. I mean, the songs are violent. It's just a consumption of violence. And that's what we must do as a society. Instead of pointing fingers at one person or, or failures where we think they're failures, we have to look at ourselves and say, what are we raising in our countries today? People who are going to, young people, who are going to embrace faith in God and, and embrace those wholesome things that we grew up on, or are they going to uh, be an enabled by the violence we see. So I would suggest that it's the way our societies are, are going forward. It has a lot to do with what we're seeing today. A pretty sad commentary. Now, that is, that is textbook 101 and avoiding the question. It's a brilliant diversion. Well done. I listened to everything there. The problem is this. Trump was um, even... Some of these rallies, you know, when someone stood up, there was, a, there was this bloke that stood up at one of his rallies, um, one of his supporters. We've got a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. And the camera cuts to Trump, and he's nodding away furiously. I mean, this this is a man that perhaps enabled um, their deluded thought. Not that he was intending to, but it, but it's happened. Well, I've been to rallies, and I could tell you that there's been no massive violence against anyone at rallies. Yes, there's been one or two people they get out of hand. I have never, ever, ever heard what the president uh, target Muslims or target anyone of a different ethnic background than he is. But I, what I have heard, and I've seen it myself, where the media has taken a lot of what he said out of context, where they just give sound bites to the people of this country especially. Uh, so, so it has a lot to do with, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but I'll say it, 
Uh, it's called fake news, but I like to call it the, the false narratives for a political agenda. We don't have the press, the free press in this country like we used to, where, where the news is reported. It's a lot of opinion and editorializing, and it is damaging, very damaging to this free society. Well, these are, the, these are some of the things that he actually said. I mean, I have given you direct quotes of some of the things that, that he said. It's, that's not fake news. I mean, I mean, he, he claimed that, quote, Islam hates us. He also said um, that uh, the Brits are trying hard to disguise their massive Muslim problem. That's not fake news, Steve. These are things that he has said. Uh, do, you, do, do you deny that? Well, 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 look, no, I don't. I won't deny that. Uh, if he has said these things, I have not heard him say these things personally, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know what, there are times we say things that maybe we could be a little bit more definitive, a little bit more uh, definitive in the way that we're not talking about everyone. Look, I, I don't like the idea that, that Muslims are targeted. I have friends who are Muslim. Uh, I do wish, and, and I've said this all along, that the uh, Muslim leaders would stand up and be a lot louder uh, in regard to some of the things that are going on around the world with regard to uh, Muslims, uh, just like I would like to see a lot of Democrats and Republicans stand up with regard to anti-Semitism that we're facing in this country. We need our leaders to stand up and unite, not divide. That's right. But um, I can tell you this. Gun control? Uh, just very quickly, gun control, yeah. Steve. Is, is it the answer? No, it is not. Uh, Chicago, here in this country, has the toughest gun control laws, as does Washington, D.C., and they have the highest uh, rate of gun violence. The, the, uh, look, at there should be reasonable gun regulations. I think your prime minister is going down the right road. I've read some of the things she wants to do. Good road she's going down. But gun control is not the solution. It's like telling a person that gets in the car drunk and they kill people in that car, well, we're going to get rid of cars. We know gun control is not the solution. What is the solution is education at a young age and to make sure that people who commit crimes go to prison. The problem in our country is they commit crimes, they serve a short period of time, and the judges let them out to commit crimes again. We appreciate your time on the program. Um, Stephen Rogers, the former um, Donald Trump campaign advisor, of which uh, there, were, there were many. We um, appreciate your time, Stephen. We'll come back to you again at uh, some future stage. We love having you on the program.